The UK government hasn't exactly covered themselves in glory um, over the course of this recent crisis in Afghanistan. I say recent, of course, the, the general issues have been going on for many decades in, in the country. Um, whether it was Dominic Raab refusing to take a phone call that could have saved lives because he was too busy <laughs> on holiday, um, or Pretty Patel talking about how we can't possibly accept you know 20,000 refugees all in one go, even though, of course, Britain has over 200,000 empty homes. It really hasn't been um, a time to be proud of the British government. Um, but this story kind of takes that to new heights. I think. Um, so, this is a story that's been broken by the Times. The British Embassy apparently left the CVs of locals applying for interpreter jobs. They, they just, they left them there. So, this is information about people who've applied for a job as an interpreter to work with Britain and potentially some other Western countries, and that in the eyes of the Taliban is being in cahoots with countries and peoples that are their mortal enemy. And those CVs were just left for the Taliban to find. Um, the fate of some of these applicants um, is unknown. We don't know what's happened to all of them, and it may cost some of them their lives. It may have already cost some of them their lives. So, I know you all might be a little bit sick of hearing about Afghanistan. You might be a little bit sick of me talking about it on the show. But I think it's important because it's a country where powerful nations continue to try and meddle. Um, and... You know, the nation was becoming a, a democratic socialist country um, towards the end of the 1980s and the beginning of the 1990s. Um, but thanks in part to the US-backed Mujahideen, some, some factions of which developed into Al-Qaeda, um, the government collapsed. And of course it was backed by the Soviet Union, which collapsed around that time, so it didn't have that backing anymore. Um, but ever since then... It really has just been a decline for Afghanistan with, with, with some improvements in women's rights and things in the, the last 20 years. But really, it's been one disaster after another. Um, and of course, domestic forces of persecution are very, very prominent there, like the Taliban. So, it's just important because it gives us a perfect example of what not to do, essentially. And the British government is still giving those examples about that. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I, I am sick and tired of talking about this, but not because I don't care, but because it seems like nothing will change, you know? And I understand a lot of you probably feel like that, a lot of you feel hopeless. Um, I feel the same uh, a lot of the time, because... The British government will totally fail over and over and over again. And they will show either through just lack of compassion and a total disregard for human life and well-being. Or through absolutely gobsmacking incompetence that you can't trust the UK government to look after people. You can't trust it to act in the interest of ordinary people. It doesn't matter whether they were, they're English, Welsh, Northern Irish, Scottish, Afghan. It doesn't matter where you're from. The UK government can't be trusted to look after you and to do the right thing. Like I said, whether it's because they're incompetent or because they're just selfish. I don't know. I think it's usually a combination of the two. And it just frustrates me because what is the alternative that we have in this country? The Labour Party are in absolute shambles. Um... They seem hell-bent on losing the next election really badly. So, the Tories will continue to win. And we'll have a government that continues to fail in its fundamental duties of protecting the British people. And protecting refugees, especially in countries where we have had significant military influence. Like Afghanistan. 
people will probably lose their lives because of mistakes and deliberate actions that the government have taken, such as leaving those CVs in the embassy, such as Dominic Raab not taking that phone call because he was too busy on holiday, such as Dominic Raab's many other errors um, throughout this crisis. Uh, and of course, we should have made it clear to the Americans when we went in to Afghanistan in 2001 that we were going in there to nation build. We weren't just going to go in there, wage war, and then just occupy the country for a bit and then leave. That's colonization, not, not nation building. And it's important we recognize there were some improvements um, in women's rights, of course, and academia, and there was more freedom of speech. But it was far from an actual democracy, Afghanistan. It was not. It was, a, it was an authoritarian regime. It's rec it was recognized by the World Democracy Index as such before the Taliban took over. So we have made a huge mess time and time again in this country, and it's just depressing. It seems like no matter who's in power uh, in the UK, we fail in our duty to help people in other countries, and we fail in our duty to help you know our own people. So, sorry that this story is a bit depressing, but um, I do think it's a sign. Hopefully, the the the, the sheer, uh, like I said, incompetence, the sheer callousness, the sheer cruelty. And the sheer recklessness and uh, lack of, uh, total lack of empathy and, and value, uh, valuing of human life will come back to bite the British government in the arse when the British people vote in the next election. You've got to hope, right? Um, because so something has to give, something has to change. Um, because we've done a lot of damage in Afghanistan and it's our duty to help. Um, especially people who were working with us, interpreters and diplomats and people who applied to those roles and things like that. So, yeah, um, I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Um, do you think the government is, is, is failing on these issues and the embassy is failing on these issues mainly because of incompetence or do you think it is just they don't care or what? I'd love to, I'd love to know your thoughts. So, as always, thank you all very much for watching and, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.